One of the things that people say about the Green New Deal constantly is that it's too fast, that there's no way we can get all of these projects accomplished in 10 years. And more than that, there's no way we can get to net zero emissions in 10 years. That our lives can continue exactly the way that they've been going, that our economy can continue to exist in the form that it's existing. We just have to let the market and technology, that will take us to the end, right? But actually, no. could have done this one step at a time had we started when we first knew that climate change was happening, right? But we didn't, and so this is where we are. So the fact that we have 10 years to rapidly transition our economy away from fossil fuels is the opinion provided by some of the best climate scientists in the world, the body that we most trust to tell us about climate change. In the next 10 years, we have to get to net zero emissions or as close as we can get to that. And the way that the Green New Deal proposes to do that is through industrial policy, through a nationwide economic mobilization to rapidly transition our economy away from fossil fuels and to cleaner energy sources. The market has failed to solve this problem for the last 40 years. So the idea that they will now all of a sudden rethink doing business, right, and they will fix it on their own, I think is actually a very open question. We are talking about a large scale rethinking of the way that we do business in America. There is no other option. So one of the main ways that we can decarbonize is by actually taking fossil fuels out of the generation of power and electricity. And a key component of that is creating a smart grid. So our grid right now is basically kind of like having a rotary phone versus having an iPhone, right? A rotary phone, you put your finger in, you, you know, you dial and it's fine. You can still make a call, but you definitely can't email, text, etc. Whereas a smart grid is kind of like the smartphone version of our electrical grid now. If you were to make the grid more efficient, it would actually pay for itself. Who wouldn't want a smart grid? The fact is we have the technology we need to go to 80% renewables today, right? We understand how to do that. Before, the argument against renewables was always they're too expensive, right? It will increase costs. Those costs will likely get passed on to consumers. We can't do that. But now that's not the case anymore. They are cost competitive, if not cheaper than fossil fuels. There is sense and strategy in setting a high goal when there is a crisis that you have to avert. It is possible to throw the full might of our nation behind a project, behind a goal. And if you do that, you can achieve things that you never thought were possible. With World War II, of course, the war came to us and the U.S. had to respond. And so it had to up production. And so there's a really famous speech that FDR did, is one of the weirdest speeches in American history, where he basically stood up and said, I want to produce 300,000 airplanes. I want to produce 150,000 tanks, right? And everyone, even his close advisors before, were like, you cannot say this. This is crazy. We cannot reach those targets. The only way that we were actually going to hit these targets it was through collaboration, was through working together, even when it was really tough, and even when people didn't fully agree, which was all the time. And so you saw car manufacturers working with airplane manufacturers and mass producing planes. You saw government armories working with private companies to license new technology so that they could be mass produced. And we hit those production targets. World War II created an incredible amount of well-paid jobs, right, um, with union protections, and it also seeded new industry. We didn't know how to mass produce aircraft before, and we became the first nation that knew how to do that. We knew that we were on the line and that there was no other choice, and so we figured out how to do it. The function of the Green New Deal, a large part of it is to tell people where to go, where we're heading, on what timeline and how. 
way that we're dealing with climate change is perhaps the most human reaction we've seen on such a large scale. It feels so big and immense that we are just looking at it and going, well, I'm just gonna walk away and hope it takes care of itself. Like, who hasn't done that? It's essentially just ghosting. We're just attempting to ghost the planet, except we're facing this really hard realization now that unlike in the movies, we cannot move to the moon and there's no other planet to go re-inhabit once we wreck this one. And so we have to figure out how to stay on this planet before Earth essentially rejects us and ghosts us. So we are in the power position right now. And while we have the power position, we should probably play it. <laughs>